Welcome back. This is a continuation of my previous video on projectile motion. In this video, I'll be sharing some helpful tips as well. Let's look at this example, and put everything we learned in the previous lesson into practice. Please watch my previous video, on this subject to review the material. Let's look at this question. A boy throws a ball at an angle of 30 degrees, above the horizontal plane, and at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. Determine the time required to reach a height of 15 meters, as well as the magnitude and direction of the velocity at this point. First, let's sketch the trajectory of the ball, along with the direction and magnitude of its initial velocity. We assume that the only force applied to the ball, is the acceleration due to gravity, directed downward. The velocity of the ball changes solely due to this acceleration. The motion of the ball in the horizontal direction is independent of this acceleration. Therefore, the velocity component in the horizontal direction remains constant. That is why we resolve the velocity into these two directions, simplifying the analysis of the projectile's motion. The velocity components in these two directions are depicted here. Our goal is to find the time taken to reach a height of 15 meters. This pertains to the displacement of the ball in the vertical y direction. Let's list the available data. This kinematic equation is best suited to determine the time required to reach a displacement of 15 meters. Let us plug in the given values and express the equation as a function of time. This is a quadratic equation with two possible solutions for time. These two values correspond to the displacement of the ball as it ascends and descends. The velocity at these two moments in time must then be determined. We know that the ball's horizontal velocity remains constant during its journey. As a result, at these two moments in time, we just need to compute the vertical component of the velocity. We need to calculate the vertical velocity at intervals t of 1 and t of 2. Using either of these two equations, we can calculate the velocities. Both of these equations will give the same answer. However, I favor the second equation, since if you make a mistake calculating time, you will also make a mistake calculating the velocities. You get this velocity at a height of 15 meters, when you enter the values into the expression. The magnitude of the velocity obtained is the same. The directions, however, are diametrically opposed. On the screen, the vector representation of the velocities is displayed. We can now compute the direction and magnitude of the velocity at these two points in time. The goal of this exercise was to learn the fundamentals of projectile motion and apply the kinematic equations to solve problems involving the motion of objects in free fall. Let's go on to the next question. The following question is very similar to the one we just finished. However, the projectile takes off from a high position. A boy throws a ball horizontally off a cliff, at a height of 490 meters. This ball travels a distance of 300 meters, before dropping into the water. Find the initial velocity of the ball. Before we get to the question, let's make a sketch to understand the trajectory of the ball. Let's see how long it takes these two balls, with and without an initial velocity, to reach the bottom of the cliff. As before, we will ignore any additional forces and proceed with the assumption that the ball is simply subject to gravity. The first boy throws the ball horizontally, while the second boy drops it off the cliff. As this demonstration shows, both balls reach the bottom of the cliff at the same time. Consider this kinematic equation and apply it downward. Both balls have zero starting velocity in this direction. As a result, you get this expression with time. The initial velocity is not a variable in this expression. Therefore, regardless of the magnitude of the horizontal velocity, the ball will take the same amount of time to reach the bottom of the cliff. However, the velocity of the ball in the vertical direction should be zero when it is projected. Let's enter the provided information, and calculate the time for the trajectory. In this case, 
it takes 10 seconds to reach the bottom of the cliff. This is the amount of time it takes the ball to go through the air. During this time, the ball travels 300 meters in a horizontal direction. As a result, dividing the displacement by the flight time yields the required velocity to move 300 meters in 10 seconds. This translates to 30 meters per second. I hope this explanation was helpful. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we will look at the angle that would give the maximum horizontal range. A boy throws a ball at a velocity of u, meter per second, and at an angle theta above the horizontal. Show that there are two angles, that have the same horizontal range. Find the angle that has the maximum range. You can disregard any additional forces, and proceed as though the ball is only subject to gravity. Consider the trajectory of two balls thrown at the same velocity, but at different angles. These two are complementary angles. In other words, these two angles add together to produce a right angle. We can see that ball B, remains in the air for a longer period of time, than ball A. However, the horizontal range of both balls is the same. This is true only when the sum of the two angles forms a right angle. Let us derive an equation, and confirm this finding. First, we must determine the flight time. This should be an expression, in which theta is a variable. We know that the vertical displacement of the ball is zero. This is due to the fact that both the launch, and the impact take place on the same horizontal surface. The decomposed initial velocity in the x and y directions is shown on the screen. We have all of the data, we need to determine the flight time. Let's apply this kinematic equation, along the vertical axis, to calculate the duration of the projectile motion. Kinematic equations are frequently applied, in the vertical direction to determine the time of flight. We ignore the value of zero for time, because it corresponds to the initial point of the trajectory. As a result, the duration of the entire motion is given as follows. We will then use this duration, to compute the horizontal range of the projectile. The range will be calculated using the same kinematic equation, but this time we will apply it in the x direction. This is an expression of the angle theta. Now we shall use trigonometry to find the two angles. The sine of 2 times theta is equal to the sine of its supplementary angle, which is 180 minus 2 times theta. We can write two expressions as shown here. When you solve the first expression, you obtain a value for theta as follows. Let us now solve the second expression, to calculate the complementary angle of theta. This is provided here. These are the two angles, at which you can throw a ball that result in the same horizontal range. Let's go back to the expression, that we derived for the horizontal range. The maximum horizontal range is reached, when the value of sine 2 times theta is 1. When you solve the expression, you get the value for theta as 45 degrees. That means you get the maximum horizontal range, when you throw a ball at an angle of 45 degrees. We can calculate the maximum horizontal range as shown here. Let's look at another question. In this question, we will look at how to make a connection between the vertical and horizontal motion of a projectile. A projectile is launched at a velocity of 40 meters per second and at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. This projectile scuffs the peaks of two 60 meter tall structures. The projectile's trajectory remains constant during its flight. Determine the distance between the two towers. Before we approach the question, let's use this table to write down everything we know about the motion of the projectile. The motion in the horizontal direction is independent of the vertical motion. As a result, we can use the kinematic equation in either direction independently. Please keep in mind that time is shared in both directions. In other words, the time required to travel a vertical distance due to the vertical component of velocity is equal to the decomposed horizontal displacement of the projectile. We will first determine the time required to reach a height of 60 meters. We can determine the horizontal displacement of the projectile using this duration. Finally, 
we can calculate the distance between the two towers by subtracting the two displacements. This kinematic equation can be used to calculate the time required to cover a distance of 60 meters. This is a second order equation. As a result, we should obtain two values for time. These two points in time correlate to the projectile's displacement as it ascends and descends. The two instances in time that it will take for the ball to reach 60 meters are given as such. The horizontal range of the projectile that corresponds to these two instances in time must then be calculated. The range can be calculated using the same kinematic equation. Please remember that the acceleration in this direction is zero. Using these two displacement figures, we have the means to compute the distance separating the two towers, as indicated on the screen. In this question, we'll inspect velocity and displacement graphs on both the horizontal X and vertical Y axes. This examination will assist you in grasping the approach to tackling questions related to projectile motion. Let us look at the question. A projectile is propelled from a cliff with an initial speed of 40 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. This projectile is launched from a height of 800 meters above the ground. You need to find out how high the projectile ascends from its starting point. Next, find out the horizontal distance it covers when it reaches the same level as its launch point. Also find out how long it remains in the air and finally what the total range is when it reaches the ground. We will draw three graphs to illustrate the velocity and displacement of the projectile's motion in the X and Y direction. The two charts located at the top of the screen depict the projectile's horizontal velocity and displacement. Additionally, the graph positioned at the bottom of the screen illustrates the projectile's vertical velocity. We will launch the projectile at 40 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees and plot these three graphs. The projectile will have reached its maximum height at this point. The time required to reach the maximum height is provided as T of M. Neither the horizontal component of velocity nor the displacement graph can be used for calculating T of M. As such, we frequently use the vertical component of the velocity to determine the time at any given point along the trajectory. We will use this equation in the Y direction to calculate the time taken to reach the maximum height. The velocity in the Y direction at the maximum point is zero. Therefore, we can calculate T of M like so. This equation can now be used to determine displacement in both the X and Y directions. However, we only need to calculate the projectile's maximum height. As such, we will use this kinematic equation in the Y direction and find the maximum height in this manner. At this point, the projectile is in the same vertical position as before. We cannot calculate the projectile's displacement in the X direction without T of P. To determine T of P, we must use kinematic equations in the vertical direction. As previously mentioned, we will use this kinematic equation in the vertical direction to calculate the time at any given position along the trajectory. The time taken to arrive at the same vertical position as the point of launch is given as follows. Time equal to zero is disregarded as it refers to the initial position of the launch. We will substitute T of P in this kinematic equation to calculate the displacement in the X direction. The acceleration in the X direction is zero. Therefore, we can calculate the displacement in the X direction as follows. The trajectory of the projectile has reached its final position. At this point, we need to calculate the displacement in the X direction and the total time in the air. Calculating the displacement in the X direction hinges on knowing the time. Similar to our previous approach, we will apply the kinematic equation in the Y direction to ascertain the time and then use that value to calculate the range. We obtain two values for T of E. However, one of these values is negative, which we disregard. This positive value corresponds to the time that the projectile stays in the air. We will use this value obtained for time 
to calculate the projectile's displacement in the X direction. We can use this kinematic equation to determine the displacement of the projectile in the X direction, as demonstrated on the screen. This is equivalent to the area under the curve in the velocity time graph plotted for the horizontal component of velocity. You can coin these questions in many different ways, but they often converge to one of the methods I've covered in this video. I trust that this video has been informative and has shed light on the topic of projectile motion. I welcome your feedback in the comments section to aid me in enhancing the quality of this video series. In the upcoming video, I will be delving into the subject of circular motion. Please subscribe to this channel that will encourage me to make more and more videos on this subject. If you found this lesson useful, please leave a comment below. Please don't forget to press the bell icon before you move out of this channel. Let's meet again with another video. Bye.